I will uh, cite one. What I thought was, you know, at one point in time today, while there is a genuine quest and a thirst for quintessential knowledge, there is also one set of people who keep questioning. Let me not get into critiquing or criticizing about people who ask questions because they know, if at all, there is one civilization where we can decently, indecently, respectfully, less respectfully ask questions, this is the only civilization. No other civilization is going to let them ask questions. So giving them that liberty, let us take it on a positive note. Some people do ask questions if the bird can hold that much of weight. The bird in its claws can hold that much of weight. I don't know how big the Garuda of Mahabharatam was, but the Acharyas who have given me the knowledge of searching and understanding YouTube videos have found something very interesting for us. What I've done is I have posted the background music from one of the movies where I could play a tiny role called Vedanta Deshika. See what the bird can lift. See, this depiction is not to um, uh, bring some excitement, but w the point that I'm trying to make is, we have references to the Mahabharata verses. If people ask for citations and references and inscriptions, we have them for many, many millennia before. And Vyasa Acharya must have been such a very good observer of things of the flora and the fauna that have happened around him that he knew how to confirm that birds could lift such heavy objects. Could you ever think that a good, well-developed goat, fox, they are all lifted just in those two claws. So, if this small a bird could lift that, I am sure he could have lifted a baby elephant and a tortoise too. That's it. Now, what did he do after that? So, that consumption was over, that breakfast part was over. Now, after that, he had to continue his journey. Before that, uh, I'm sure many of you will have um, uh, children, grandchildren, who are all fans of uh, neo-books. So, I feel 
our civilization directly and indirectly has been an inspiration to many 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 other civilization and books it has traveled the seas it has gone to other continents and has come to us back in a different way where we are not aware it, it may have had a chance of going from here here is going to be two scenes that i show from a book that i used to wait in the british library outside in bangalore for to get the first copy of the book harry potter so in the second book called the chamber of secrets uh when harry goes to the sarsa slytherin's chamber where um uh, he's to be taken by the bellatrix uh, if what is the snake's name basilisk so in basilisk so what he does is while he's about to die and many of them were caught in the chamber of the secret that is when there is a bird which is supposedly the pet bird of dumbledore that comes and carries them that is called the fox and then in book number 5 which is the order of phoenix we get to see when uh, dumbledore is to be arrested the bird carries him so i am not attributing or trying to say that jk rowling must have sat through one of the garuda upakhyanam lectures given by anantaram adikshitar in astika samajam but what i am trying to say is the ideas of mahabharata must have traveled in the last 2000 years to various civilization and must have given ideas to other poets if you go ask her about garuda she may not know but if you ask her where you got this idea from maybe she'll say i got it from greek civilization and greeks were called yavanas and yavana had a person called kala yavana who was the coalition partner of jarasandha when he fought krishna in mahabharata times so there is always been a connection so just see what uh, our great directors have to say uh, uh, to the minister that dumbledore has got style i would rather keep it this way garuda has a style so so when garuda took all of them carried ate them then he has to go to the pattinam the city of indra there he goes and fights with indra and gets that amrita kalasham so this amrita kalasham and garuda go very hand in hand so there is a depiction that you can see here he is the amrita kalasha garuda that that is shown in a painting is there a living sanctum sanctorum to him yes in shri rangam when you get into through the rangaranga gopuram you take left you will have Gar uh, amrita kalasha garuda sannidhi so this is how he looks now when he carried fought indra and the other deities in amaravati patnam and got the amrita kalasham we need to commemorate his victory where do we go for amrita kalasham so we have wonderful kitchens that make a prasadam called amrita kalasham for garuda have you how many of you have tasted amrita kalasha prasadam one there okay i'll give you the recipe so you take moong dal paitamparpu and you'll have to uh, steam it well give about four five sounds i don't know about the insta pot how it works but uh, trusting it's a good cooker a well performing cooker with no uh, none of its capillaries of arteries blocked then four five sounds will suffice and then you mash the dal and then keep the vella paga separate don't give it to two strings then it will become manoharam just one string will do and then add this vella paga this concoction made of jaggery to the mashed moong dal and mix it well so that it doesn't become a very very loose paste it has to be thick like chapati maavu then make balls of it you can add cardamom or you can add little ghee and then make balls of it and steam it so that is called as amrita kalasham okay now i have to say i i don't get i hope i don't get into any of the copyright problems it is from shanti taligai <laughs> so then as he brings the amrita kalasham out to release and relieve his mother from the bonds of slavery he's out as he gets out of the amaravati patnam he sees someone extremely handsome he sees that person as a personification of spotless blemishless beauty 
every part of this person is worth a poem he sees beauty personified right in front of him and he asks you look extremely handsome sir i wish i could grant a boon to you ask what you want that person who was standing opposite said i wish to say the same thing to you you too look extremely valorous brimming with prowess very 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 powerful i wish to give one boon to you so each of them had one one boon in their hand that is when uh, garuda said i should always be atop you if you are there i should be above you the person opposite said okay I, it's time for me to ask for a boon you should always be below me <laughs> and uh, garuda said okay done after he said done he realized how could one person be both up and down the person who was standing opposite him was shriman narayana so he said don't worry garuda below me you shall be my vehicle above me you shall be the emblem on my flag garuda dhvaja toshaya geeto garuda dandaka above me you are the emblem below me you are my vehicle okay there is a pertinent question here well they granted boon to each other but the lord appeared in front of garuda right on what did he come nadande vanduttar sir ola ola that ola who doesn't accept ola money and accepts only in cash so now please remember water exists in three states solid as ice liquid in its very own state and as vapor in its gaseous state each of these states of water is called as nilai in tamil similarly parabrahmam is also like water you may say how are you comparing water with parabrahmam remember when in ramayanam dasharatha asks is my son worthy to become my heir apparent every father who anoints his son as the successor should check if the son is worthy enough so dasharatha did in those days though it was largely called a dynasty there was democracy then too so he asked is my son rama capable of becoming the heir apparent that time vasishtha says yes what did vasishtha reply kamban tells in kambaramayanam unnum neerinum avanaye uhappar people love him more than the water that they drink why because water has many attributes of paramatma if paramatma's daya flows from the higher level to lower level so does water flow from higher level to lower level paramatma fits himself in any house in any suitcase in any temple like how water fits itself into the container so there are many many attributes so that said there are many states of paramatma like how water has solid state liquid state and gaseous state see if you travel by any of these airlines they will ask you water sir sparkling water and do i put some ice cubes so ice cube solid can exist along the liquid state so two states of the same h2o can exist together similarly there are five states of paramatma para vyuha vibhava antaryami archa para state is where he is in shri vaikuntham as paravasudeva vyuha is where he gets into all these functions like creation sustenance and dissolution like spa have you heard of spa sankarshana pradyumna aniruddha s p a these are the vyuha states now in that state he exists as vyuha murti paravasudeva vyuha murti third is when he is born he grows is nourished nurtured lives and then goes back to his abode that is called as vibhava avataram rama krishna adi avataram is called vibhavam fourth where he stays within each of us as the antaryami hardam the last state is that of where he 
gives a beautiful darshanam to his devotees across various temples beginning with Shri Guruvayur, Tiruvananthapuram, Tiruvallikeni, Shri Rangam, Kanchipuram, Pullam, Bodhangudi, Adhanur, Simhachalam, Ahobilam, Yadavadri and so on. It's called Archavataram. Like how solid state and liquid state of water can exist together, Vibhavavataram and Archavataram can exist together. Rama, who is Vibhavavataram, worshipped Ranganatha, who is Archavataram. Krishna, who is Vibhavavataram, worshipped Guruvayurappa, who is Archavataram. So you see two states existing together. Similarly, Garuda also has five states. The Garuda who was born to Vinata was the Vibhavavataram of original Garuda. The original Garuda with, is always there carrying the Lord. Now you may wonder, sir, didn't this Garuda spot the other? Correct. This Garuda should have said, who is the one who is just resembling me? Why couldn't he see? The answer lies in J.K. Rowling's uh, third book called as The Prisoner of Azkaban. So, I, I keep telling, there are many ideas that have gone from our country through civilizations which come back. So, Harry thinks that there is some animal that is protecting him. But it was actually he who was protecting himself. So you can't see in Vibhavavataram the para state. So Garuda couldn't see the other Garuda. But there was another Garuda there. So the question is how did the Lord come here? He came on Garuda. But that Garuda was state one Garuda. Para Swarupam of Garuda. And the Garuda who was opposite the Lord was the Vibhavavataram of Garuda.